Hello and welcome to the University of Florida College of Medicine Ultrasound Module. This is module number 7, Aorta and FAST exam. Today you're going to be able to evaluate the abdominal aorta from the celiac trunk all the way down to the bifurcation. You're going to check the diameter of the vessel and we're also going to be doing the FAST exam, the ones we do in trauma to evaluate for free fluid in the abdomen. So we're mainly going to be looking at the abdominal aorta. Uh, this region here and uh, we're going to be mainly going from the celiac trunk to the bifurcation paying specific attention to the infrarenal portion of the aorta as uh, the majority of uh, aneurysms occur in the infrarenal region. So we're going to start with a curvilinear probe at the level you know uh, the subsiphoid level and we're going to be paying attention to make sure our transducer is pointed toward the patient's right and this is the uh, view we're going to get where our transducer sits on top and the patient's right is going to be on the left side of your screen and the patient's left on the right side. Kind of the same view you get when you're looking at a CT scan, kind of when you're looking from the patient's feet upward. And our main uh, landmark is going to be the spine. It creates a shadow and we're going to make sure we have the spine so we can make sure we're looking at the aorta. There are the structures such as the inferior vena cava. Here we have a drawing from Gray's Anatomy of the ciliac trunk and they've retracted the stomach upwards. So they're showing you the left gastric artery along with the common hepatic and the splenic artery. And this is our ultrasound image where you see the spine uh, and the inferior portion of your screen along with the aorta, the celiac trunk, the splenic, and the common hepatic artery. And as you know, we have signs. This is called the Siegel sign, where you can see the splenic and common hepatic. And as we scroll down the abdomen, you're going to find the superior mesenteric artery. We are looking for our spine again, our Z landmark. We're going to find the aorta and then we're going to find the SMA, the superior mesenteric artery. We can also see the right renal artery, and then we can see the left renal vein running in between the SMA and the aorta, and then the IVC and the splenic vein. And when we measure the aorta, we want to make sure that it's no greater than three centimeters. That would be considered an aneurysm, okay? So here we have a 1.84 centimeter diameter pretty much the same across so that's pretty normal and then we have this other patient that clearly has an aneurysm uh, by definition it's greater than three centimeters it's 5.28 here we have a sagittal view of the aorta so we put the transducer towards the head you'll see the liver on top the aorta with a spine line in the inferior portion of your screen and you're able to see the celiac and the SMA so let's talk about the FAST exam. In this picture I bring from my former photojournalist days. Uh, let's say they're bringing a patient from a horrible car wreck and their abdomen is swollen and you think they have blood in their abdomen. So you're going to do the FAST. It stands for Focused Assessment with Ultrasonography in Trauma. We do that. That's like a bread and butter. It has four imaging windows. The subsiphoid, the right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, and the suprapubic. So the subxiphoid, we look for the heart. You have the liver, the right side of the heart, and the left side of the heart on the inferior portion of your screen. Then the right upper quadrant, you're looking at the hepatorenal space, which will be the most dependent portion of the body when you're prone that can accumulate fluid. You're looking for the liver, kidney, and you're going to be able to see the diaphragm. You want to make sure there's no free fluid in that area. Next area, the left upper quadrant, we're looking for the uh, splenorenal space. A little bit more tricky to get. Your hand needs to be almost all the way down to the bed so you can clearly visualize the spleen. Sometimes you have to work around, make sure you have rib shadows. And last, the suprapubic area in the transverse plane will show us the bladder. Now let's see a couple of uh, cases that are, are abnormal. Here you have a subsiphoid view uh, where you're looking at the heart and you should see the right side of the heart on the superior portion of your screen. And uh, as you can see, there's a, a dark anechoic area around the heart. 
and you know in the setting of somebody who's been stabbed in the chest or somebody who struck their chest against the steering wheel you need to be concerned for a pericardial effusion and in some cases you also have to be concerned for a cardiac tamponade uh, or you know that um, pathological inability of the heart to not f be able to fill with blood it occurs during diastole and your patients are really really sick and here again the free fluid effusion with tamponade here's the right upper quantum view when you see the liver and the kidney and there's that again that anechoic area uh, anechoic, um, you know, no echoes, meaning free fluid. Remember, uh, free fluid shows in your ultrasound as anechoic and dependent. Uh, so it'll move around as you move your probe. You also know the sharp edges there that are demarcated by the fluid. So as a review, we've talked about the aorta, how we're able to scan down the aorta, make sure there's no normal dilatation or an aneurysm. We've done a little introduction to the FAST exam. Uh, we talked about the four windows that are included in the FAST exam. So that's it for the aorta and FAST exam. All right, see you in the lab.